What's up? If you guys have just checked out a couple of my GoPro videos and you're snooping around for some GoPro accessories, today's video is specifically GoPro travel accessories. Now, I'm specifying travel because that's mostly the type of GoPro content that I shoot. I take my GoPro traveling, I create GoPro travel films. Be sure to check out some of those other GoPro travel films up here. Or you may have checked out my recent um, low budget filmmaker tips video where I discuss some of these accessories. So today I wanted to elaborate on that video and just go into a little bit more detail as to some of the accessories that I'm using to help get the shots that I'm getting. accessories you can either buy directly through GoPro or you can buy them um, third party. And I'm gonna put a link, which is an affiliate link in the description of this video, which will lead you to either the GoPro website directly or the third party, which may be on Amazon or wherever else you buy your GoPro accessories. Know that that's no added cost to you, but if you are shopping for any of these accessories and you're using my affiliate links, then I will get a small commission. The very first mount that I wanna to touch on is the GoPro magnetic swivel mount. It's brand new to the GoPro arsenal. I don't know if you can get this as a third party, but I'm sure they're gonna be coming onto the market very soon. The two main purposes as to why I love this mount are because I use it on an airplane where I can just stick the GoPro to the airplane window. It's a swivel mount so I can swivel the camera around and I can you know, tilt it down and shoot an, an outdoor uh, hyperlapse as the plane is moving. Really cool shot to add to your travel films. And then the other purpose is just solely to stick it wherever you want. You know, it's, it's magnetic super handy travel accessory, something I highly recommend. New to GoPro. Now the next uh, mount that I wanna talk about, I would recommend before you just dive in and buy one of these mounts alone, is this new combo that GoPro released called the Zeus. Basically, this is a light and the GoPro swivel mount as a package deal. The main purpose that I would use for something like this, the Zeus, is not so much for the LED light. However, this is a fantastic little LED light if you are traveling, hiking, you're in a tent and you just want some extra light other than your phone light. It's much more powerful and it's USB-C charged. So you're gonna get a lot more use out of this light. Also, if you are diving and you wanna go nice and deep underwater and try and find some aquatic marine life, you can use these LED, they're waterproof, so you can use these LED lights, maybe without this sort of rubber diffuser, but I would use the light connected to a mount and I would go down and I would be able to see something kind of cool underneath the water. Lots of use cases for this, lots of use cases for this combo. And I think this is a really great GoPro travel accessory to have just in your travel kit. Moving on from that, let's talk about diving. Let's talk about, you know, swimming and water, water content. Um, let's say I wanted to use this GoPro light mode to capture underwater marine aquatic life in really dark places. Say there's a nice little wobbegong shark underneath the water um, and he's in a little cave and you wanted to light it up. You would get one of these little Zeus lights. They're waterproof. And I would connect it to something like this, which is a, a, a Ulanzi dual camera mount. One, it's great for mounting the light on as well if you don't have the GoPro media mod. So I can just mount the, the light on like that and I've got the light and the camera side by side and then I can connect that to my selfie stick. Alternatively, if you're doing any, some, any comparison content, you know, you wanna shoot on the GoPro Max and check out some side by side content with the GoPro Hero 9, easily mounting them, both cameras together. It's just, this is a handy little mount. Having the cameras directly on the same plane, you know, these, and these things I've never been able to find in a camera shop. So definitely click the links below if you're looking for one of those dual mounts. I had to buy it online. I think it was like $9 or something. One of the questions I also get asked a bunch is in regards to dive cases. When we're talking about diving, and, and the question is, do I use a dive case, the plastic dive case? When I'm free diving, when I'm diving, I, I, don't have the, I don't have the need. If I was scuba diving a lot, sure, I would maybe consider investing in buying one of those plastic dive cases. But for the way that I use my GoPro, I don't use any cases. If you got the GoPro Hero 8, another question which I often get asked is in regards to the tainted glass because you cannot change the front screen. Now, you'll notice on the brand new GoPro Hero 9, you have the ability to take off the front screen like previous generations, the six and the seven. So you can add ND filters or you can add other forms of accessories. I've had this camera for over a year and I've not scratched the front screen, touch wood. But yeah, I just think if you're super reckless or you're doing things where you think maybe the camera might get scratched and you want to spend an extra few bucks just to, just to you know, make sure that you're protecting the camera, then invest in those 
extra accessories. For me, however, I don't, I'm, I'm not using them. Moving on to another brand new accessory, which was just announced earlier this year, the Max Lens Mod. Now, a bunch of people have asked me some questions on whether I think it's valuable. Um, and to be honest, when I first got this, I actually thought it was terrible. <laughs> because if you first get the Max Lens Mod and you mount it to the GoPro uh, Hero 9, like so, we take this front, we fr take this front screen off, it just pops off like that. We can take the back panel off and then we can click, uh, click this on like this. I tend to just pop it on with the front casing on, swivel it around and hallelujah, we're on. We've got the max lens mod on the GoPro Hero 9. When I first got it, I thought it was terrible because I hadn't upgraded the firmware um, of the camera. So make sure you update and upgrade your camera just in terms of go to the GoPro app, app and update camera um, firmware. So it's got the latest GoPro firmware that will then enable you to click this back little button which enables the max lens mod. This little lens mod is so rad for getting ultra wide angle. I think it's 155 degree field of view shots. We found a lot of value in anything that we were doing, jet skiing, quad biking, anything where we could just show a bolder, larger perspective. You know, something that's like, yo, check out this epic landscape. So for perspective, I highly recommend getting the Max Lens Mod. It is a considerable investment. It's not a cheap accessory. If you are looking for something to diversify and add some dynamics to your content, then yeah, I would go with it. Provided you don't wanna spend the 100 or $200 that the Max Lens Mod costs, just shoot in super view. You can use the digital lenses in the GoPro Hero 9 or GoPro Hero 8 to get very similar field of view content. But in terms of like getting that ultra wide angle, that's where it really excels. So point of view shots, handheld selfie st shots where you're getting epic, bold landscapes, that kind of thing, perfect for travel content. That's why I've added it into this travel accessories guide. One of the ways I shoot uh, a lot of my Instagram stories while traveling is I will shoot the stories live in the moment in nine by 16 vertical content. And I prefer to use a GoPro rather than my iPhone because it gives me the width, it gives me that wider angle. I'm able to shoot in like a 16 mil lens as opposed to your smartphone. If you have a newer smartphone, maybe that's possible. The main reason why the wide angle I think looks good and why I'm getting a lot of questions from you guys is because you're able to fit titles, um, location tags, you know, just the accessories that go around an Instagram story within the frame. So one of the best ways that I recommend doing that if you are looking at an accessory to help you do that is to buy a portrait mount. So maybe you'd like to either set the camera up on a tripod and you wanna take a portrait image. So you're shooting some time-lapse photos or you're shooting a portrait time-lapse or you're just doing a piece to camera. Something to note and something to mention is that this particular company, AER, who have made these mounts, They've designed these for the GoPro Hero 8. You'll see as I have the GoPro Hero 9 in here, they're slightly too small, so they may already have some additional upgrades. But if you are looking at buying straight away today, just know that you can actually fit your GoPro Hero 9 in the these AER portrait mounts. Another use case for a portrait mount is if you wanted to capture, say, time warp or anything which you're shooting on the side of a boat, on the side of a jet ski, on the side of a quad bike, the way that I'm able to tackle that is to mount the camera like this using the portrait mount and using, say, a sticky mount like this to capture it stick it to the side of the ATV, stick it to the side of the, you know, the jet ski, whatever, but I'm able to still have that cinematic frame to add to my travel film. On the topic of AER, I would also recommend checking out some thumb screws. Now you may be, you know, you may have had problems with these GoPro specific thumb screws cracking. Um, pretty often, happens all the time, it's just plastic and it has that ability to break. Let's say you drop the camera or it's crushed into something. An alternative to upgrade those thumb screws would to be something like this, which I think is a titanium or it's 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 a metal of some description, but it's just a metal thumb screw. It's gonna be a little bit more durable than these plastic ones. However, I have never broken the pl plastic ones. So it's only if you are really concerned or you just generally want some extra thumb screws, um, then I would recommend getting these. Another question which seems to pop up a lot is in regards to these tiny silver thumb screws. Where I've managed to find them is they come bundled with the GoPro Shorty tripod. So if you buy the GoPro Shorty tripod or if you buy this Zeus uh, combo, little accessory, they're gonna have those silver thumb screws 
you know, bundled with them. One of the best use cases is for capturing 360 content. So when you're capturing 360 content with something like the GoPro Max, um, you don't want the thumb screw to really protrude the width of the, of the camera body for the sole purpose that when you render that content, it may stick out. So that's why using a small sort of silver thin thumb screw is just going to enable to make sure that that, you know, that mount is flush and that there's nothing extruding and there's nothing, you know, sort of protruding and getting involved and getting in the way of your shot. So really good use case. I'd recommend if you are looking for a tripod, then buy a brand new shorty tripod and you'll get a thumb screw or grab the Zeus and you'll get a thumb screw. You get the point. You can get them. They're accessible. Or if anyone knows where you can get, you know, these small silver thumb screws, then drop a comment below and help out the community because we'd all love to know. A question which I got recently was in regards to how do I best transfer my GoPro footage from the camera onto my smartphone quickly? Because sometimes the connection between the GoPro and the smartphone is pretty bad. It's, and you do where it won't connect. You know, people have had problems in the past with their Wi-Fi settings, whatever. The best way to, the best solution I have found for that is to buy one of these. So this is a, GoPro Quick Key for iPhone. They also have GoPro Quick Key for Android or for USB-C. So there's two options there. The USB-C one I keep because I plug, if I wanna take the SD card out of the GoPro, plug it in here and into my laptop, I enter it via USB-C, super handy to have with me while I'm traveling. But if I wanna get it straight to my smartphone, then I use the GoPro iPhone Quick Key. Super simple, it's gonna, once you plug it in, it'll tell your smartphone to straight away open the GoPro app and you can access your content that, the, that you've shot. If you wanna check out how I would go about editing or editing on my smartphone, check these videos up here because there's some helpful tips on how you could maybe edit your GoPro videos straight from your GoPro or straight on your smartphone. Mobile editing, it's 2020. A lot of people are asking those questions. Anyone that has made a GoPro accessories guide on the internet has talked about a bite mount. Now they probably haven't talked about the GoPro specific one because they don't wanna sell the GoPro branded stuff or whatever, you can definitely get them cheaper from third party. But the reason why I like this is solely for the design. Now, GoPro have either patented or they've managed to design this with one of their generic mounts on the front. And the beauty of having this mount on the front is that one, you can use it as a, as a bite mount for your really, really great POV shots. I think around the chin is the best position to shoot POV, point of view style content but it pairs with so many accessories. It pairs with your swivel mount. So you don't need to, you know, while you're traveling, you're like, cool, I'm getting it the POV shot. Um, I'm gonna also be able to stick this uh, magnetic swivel mount somewhere so I can get just some B-roll or some wide, or I can do a point to camera, or I can get my selfie shot. Let's say I'm using the El Grande selfie stick. I can just go, Really, I talk about this in every single GoPro video, so I'm not gonna hop on about why I like using the GoPro specific bite mount, but great design, something I have to add into this GoPro accessories guide video. Make sure if there's a specific accessory that you're interested in, I have chaptered at the bottom of this YouTube video all of the different accessories, so if you're not interested in checking out every single travel accessory that I use or that I've used um, in this video, then just go down to the chapters below. An oldie, but an absolute goodie is the GoPro chest mount. It's something that I would have in my arsenal of travel accessories for a number of reasons. Let's say I was doing anything where I needed to use both of my hands, then I would make sure I have this on. One of the places where I was really annoyed that I didn't have this on me was the theme park because I went to a theme park in Copenhagen and they wouldn't allow me to hold the GoPro. They literally like patted down my pockets and were like, do you have your phone, smartphone, GoPro, any camera on you? We cannot let you take it on. I was so annoyed that I didn't have this with me because I think if I had this with me and I had the camera strapped to my chest, tied to me, they probably would have let me on. So next up, we're gonna talk about the GoPro helmet mount. Now, it's just this sort of 90 degree swivel. It's an alternative to using these portrait mounts. If, you, you know, if you're if you just shopping through the GoPro website or you found a really good deal, I would highly recommend looking at these GoPro helmet mounts. They were designed to stick on the side of a helmet with something like this, this sort of sticky mount. It has this 90 degree swivel arm. The whole point of that is getting both perspectives. I've got it at the moment, connected to the GoPro jam mount. The reason why I'm using this jam mount is it's just an extra, it's just a little bit, it gives a little bit extra width. If I wanted to capture 360 content, they say eight centimeters is the minimum length for the render. This is less than eight centimeters, but it's gonna give me a better perspective if I'm shooting 360 content connected to a helmet 
<laughs> like looked like a Teletubby. I specifically used this whilst I was getting the shot uh, on the side of the quad bike. So just a little extra arm to give me a little extra width to either shoot vertical content or to shoot 360 content. So that's the jam mount connected to the GoPro helmet mount. You could use either of those. Moving from shot mounting to audio. Now, if you're upgrading GoPro audio, you've got this ability to buy the GoPro media mod. Definitely check out my GoPro Hero 9 launch video, just the opening video, my thought starters on getting the camera straight away and testing it out because I test out this GoPro media mod. Personally, it's not my favorite. I don't think the audio from the GoPro media mod is valuable, is worth upgrading. What I do think is worth upgrading for is this three and a half mil audio jack. So having the media mod enables the camera to plug in something like the Rode Wireless Go. Now, the Rode Wireless Go for vloggers, for anyone that wants to drastically improve their audio, even if you're doing these kind of sit down YouTube videos, this is the Rode Wireless Go. This is the microphone that I use in pretty much every YouTube video, every vlog. Um, it also comes in white and basically you just, you can connect this, a transmitter and receiver to your GoPro media mod. It mounts on the top like that and it connects into the three and a half mil jack at the back. For any content creator that's looking to improve their audio, I would invest in getting a Rode Wireless Go setup. Batteries are always something that I take on my trips. They're always good to have spare batteries. A question I got this week was how many batteries I use on a shoot. I have two GoPro Hero 9s and I have a spare battery each. So four batteries and I'm normally going through at least one and a half batteries per camera a day. So that's why I have the spares. The most annoying thing is that the new batteries don't fit into the old dual battery charger. So something I'll be buying and investing in before my next trip will be a, another dual battery charger. They fit the GoPro Hero 8, GoPro 7, GoPro 6 batteries. They also fit the GoPro Max battery, the long one. They stick out the top, but they charge. So extra batteries is always Always something that I'll travel with, always really good for travel content creators. Next up is selfie sticks. I've touched on this throughout this video, but there's three that are kind of in my arsenal. And that's the GoPro El Grande selfie stick, which is a 90 centimeter telescopic selfie stick. Perfect for getting that really nice wide shot when you're diving, when you're either, you know, any action activity, it just gives you the best width. Paired with super view or even wide, it looks good. It looks so clean. I use this most often, followed by this. Uh, this was originally called the Fusion Grip, which is now called the Max Grip. Perfect for 360 if you're shooting 360 content. It's telescopic and it also has this tripod element, which, you know, when you're shooting 360 content and you wanna either set the camera up and run around it, whatever, create those tiny world shots. That's why you would use the Max Grip. And the final accessory or the final tripod that I would take with me is just the GoPro Shorty. It's just super easy. It's perfect for vlogging. It's perfect for just setting up the camera using that tripod functionality, getting a photo, getting a time lapse, getting whatever. Each of those selfie sticks has a point and a reason why they would come with me on my adventures. Quickly touching on sticky mounts. If you were just to get a couple of accessories, I'd highly recommend having these little sticky mounts. Now you can get these ones which have the screw in sort of top with the larger surface area. Now they're both 3M sticky mounts. <laughs> Basically it's a sticker, you know, like when you're mounting either photos on the wall or you're hanging up things. They're just those 3M sticks and they're really good for sticking onto, you know, either a helmet or they're really good for sticking onto a quad bike or whatever you're using whilst you're traveling. You're borrowing a helmet from a tour provider and you want to get a couple of shots, then just these ones are really great. You stick it on, you can pluck it off straight away and there's no damage done to the tour provider's helmet. Sticky mounts, definitely have them in your, in your GoPro travel arsenal. Moving on to the next one, which is this GoPro travel adapter. It's GoPro branded. I was fortunate to be gifted this at the GoPro Creator Summit. You can get these without the GoPro branding on it. You can get them, this style, this design, you can get them from a load of places. But the coolest part about this is because I'm Australian, a lot of my, you know, a lot of my power ports are Australian. So I plug them in here at the back and then I'm able to access European power sockets. Super simple, but it also has four USB, two ports at the bottom. So you've got like USB 2.0, so you can literally charge all your GoPros with this one accessory. Second last, we're talking about domes. Now there's a bunch of types of domes and sometimes it can be hard to navigate what dome to get. I would recommend watching my specific dome video where I talk about the dome that I was using a couple of years ago, which was the G-Dome by Chris Rogers. 
This year, however, I've been shooting on the Teleson, both of which are great, both have different pros and cons. You dunk your entire GoPro in here and you're able to get those amazing 50-50 above underwater shots. It's not about sort of putting the GoPro lens up to the water, you have one of these. So you put the GoPro in there and away you go. Phenomenal accessory for capturing really cool social media content, just really cool shots, dynamic shots to add to travel films. So I definitely recommend a, Go a GoPro Dome and if you're interested to know more about GoPro Domes or which G D Dome to get, G Dome or Teleson, both linked in the description, but, but watch that other video, it's gonna give you more insight. I pack all of this stuff into one bag and that bag happens to be the GoPro Seeker backpack. This bag has been designed for GoPro creators. Now there's plenty of other travel bags on the market, but if you are just looking for a, you know, a bag which mounts and adapts to all this stuff, they have designed this one. So that's why I'm talking about this one. I also have, if you check out my, what's in my camera bag, I also travel with another backpack. But if I'm just doing a small GoPro trip and I'm thinking, you know, I only wanna take GoPro gear, then I'll take this one. Guys, if you have any questions about any of the mounts or accessories that I'm using, feel free to drop me a comment below. And if you wanna check out the other video that I've posted up here or up here in the cards here, uh, it's basically running you through some of my thoughts and process towards creating GoPro travel films or low budget filmmaking. All this stuff is included. I scraped the surface with it in that video, but I give you more insight as to how I plan and go about creating action camera travel content. So definitely watch that one next, or if you've come from that one, thanks for checking out my videos. As always, thanks for sharing the stoke. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next upload. JL. Peace.